Yes. Yeah, so, so essentially, the diocese is two, one, flat, come up, two, one, flat, come up, and lunge, exhale, inhale down, exhale, stand, inhale. So if you're struggling with pressure control, you need to continue to focus on that relationship of exhale to push pressure up and off of the pelvic floor and out. So that's strengthening the muscles and strengthening the coordination and the activation pattern. So uh, that's one of the things with pelvic floor stuff too is like, is it just muscle strength or is it neuromuscular training that you need to do, which is like that very purposeful I'm inhaling to lengthen, I'm exhaling, and I'm zipping, and they're slow in their controlled exercises. And again, maybe they're not making you sweat and making your muscles super sore, but you're training a neuromuscular aspect in your body to make sure that you can recruit those muscle fibers. And then when you can do it at a low low, then you can start to add more resistance, heavier things, squats, deadlifts, those sorts of things. So neuromuscular changes can take like six to eight weeks to see that improvement and recruitment and just overall carry over. So it's always, it's not just about the strength all the time. It's can you get that activation pattern going for you in different planes of movement with your body parts. Um, and it's also the idea that what once is a very conscious effort becomes unconscious at some point. Now, there's evidence that people, especially with stress incontinence, struggle with this ability of pre-activation of the pelvic floor before movement. So in people who don't have issues, the pelvic floor pre-activates in anticipation of certain movements in the body, and people with leakage don't have that. And so when you're doing training for your pelvic floor, it's inhale length and exhale, I'm gonna zip before I leave, and that's gonna to start to retrain the body's natural response to pre-activate and compensate for that problem that your body's not. There's a couple just like this, like should I be zipped all the time? No, no. Zip only on exertion when you're doing something hard. Otherwise, work towards more relaxation. And I say that and then it throws people off because they're like, I have nothing. And it's like most people have way too much core activation going on on a regular basis. Um, so, um, so like, like let's, let's, we'll just, we'll use, just some, use some like, like ranges. ranges. If you're laying, you're laying down, down, you need like zero, zero activation, activation happening. happening. So check so in, I bet you hold and just like really let go, let go and, see and see what happens and see what that, feels, what that like. feels like. When, when you're when sitting, you're sitting I, don't know, I don't know, five, 10-ish. Um, when you're, when standing, you're standing, a little, a little bit more, more 15, 15, if you're holding a load, depending on how heavy it is in your standing, 20-ish. Walking, walking and running, and running 25, 25, 30, 30 probably, probably not as much as, as you think. think. If your if belly your button belly is button pointing straight ahead as you try to run and, run and rotate, rotate, you have way too much ab tension. Your belly button should rotate, rotate when you rotate, rotate with your hips. With your hips.